taboo in India. Stigma against the mentally ill is widespread. People, I think, didn't realize the impact. Mental health. Something. The brain is creating pain. I think mental health is a really scary topic. Seventy-five percent get no help at all. Some of the signs to look for include risky behavior, suicide rates have spiked, It's up to us to figure out which direction it is going. Because it is people like you and people like me that are going to make the change today. I would like to see actually something happening in the political world, in the business world, and of course, in the world of education. What I would like to see is that we invest in time, and thought, and money to make a difference. Please welcome Alicia London, founder and CEO of United for Global Mental Health, in conversation with Satawa Wafula, founder and executive director of My Mind, My Funk. <laughs> How are you all doing? Good? <laughs> Good. Uh, my name is Alicia London. I am the founder and CEO of United for Global Mental Health, which is launching this week here in New York. And I'm delighted to have Satawa Wafula here, um, all the way from Nairobi, Kenya, mm -hmm. um, who will we'll be speaking to today about the work she's doing. As, as we've heard from the First Lady, mental health is an issue here in New York City, and it's also an issue that's it's really important around the world. Um, and actually, if I may, before we progress, if we can hold off on any flash photography for this session, that would be fantastic. <laughs> so um, this is an issue which is huge all around the world. Um, and it's important because, um, very simply, we, we all have mental health. Uh, the First Lady asked you if you would raise your hand if there was someone, um, either yourself or someone you love, that has shared a, had a mental health condition. And um, it will happen to one in four of us. It happened to me. Um, five years ago, I was living here in New York City, um, suffered a trauma, and um, was diagnosed with PTSD and chronic depression. And as someone who's happy and healthy, I struggled with suicide very regularly. With a huge amount of support, though, I recovered um, and started to realize that there's so much we need to do all around the world. Um, mental health, will, depression alone, will be the number one cause of, mental, of illness by 2030. And just in the time that I've been speaking, um, someone has lost their life to suicide. This is both urgent and important. Um, and I'm really delighted to have Satawa here because the message we want to get across today is that this is urgent, this is important. Mm -hmm. um, there are solutions, mm -hmm. and we will need to be shining a light on these solutions that are happening all over the world um, and doing a lot more because, as the video says, it's time to act on mental health. The level of action compared to the level of need is nowhere where it needs to be around the world. As one example, in Sierra Leone, there is one psychiatrist. <laughs> there's, a, there's a huge amount that needs to, be, ha needs to happen. And so I'm really delighted to have Satara here. Satara is a mental health advocate. Um, for the last eight years, mm -hmm. you've been advocating in Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, and you're also the founder of the Satawa Wafula Leadership Acad Academy for Mental Health. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. Um, and I was wondering if you could tell me why it is that this is an issue that you care about? Um, so when I was 18, I was sexually assaulted. 
and unchecked trauma from that was later diagnosed as bipolar. And um, around that time, there wasn't proper information of, uh, first of all, where to go, who to talk to, a safe space uh, for me to deal with the ordeal. And then also what had come from it, which is the mental health diagnosis, there also wasn't, um, again, safe space and proper information. And also in the African setting, unfortunately, uh, because there isn't proper information and there's a, a lot of ignorance, especially back um, at that time, which was the early 2000s, then it was seen from a very cultural and superstitious angle as opposed from a medical angle. And so for me, it was fast to be able to understand what was going on and then also to be able to get proper access to proper support and um, so that began my journey of uh, first of all finding a release just to be able to share what I was dealing with and then from that release a lot so I started a blog and from that a lot more people started saying they were also seeing the same thing or, the, or also experiencing the same thing and they wanted to know who to talk to, where to go to and so I started what was Kenya's first free mental health support line mm -hmm. and in the first year that we were up we got around 25,000 texts from people across the country just asking for information information and support and from that number we were able to provide more than half of them with uh, linkages to support groups and psychiatrists and psychologists and the information that they really needed. Yeah. That's extraordinary. I think that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> We, um, as we've mentioned, as we know, there's not nearly enough action, but people like you are stepping up um, mm -hmm. in your community, finding the solutions that are working. Um, how do you take that, so you reaching out for the support you need, mm -hmm. then scaling it even further? There's only one Satawa. Yes. How, how can there be more of you, <laughs> or more people finding their own solutions? Uh, so through my journey, I saw that, because initially the thought process was we just need more psychiatrists or we need more medical people so that we can sort of solve uh, mental health issues. Mm -hmm. But then just seeing that everybody is a stakeholder in the mental health uh, process and um, how can the people who've either gone through, because your experience sort of qualifies you. And so how can people who've experienced, people who are caregivers, because then that's also a group that we sometimes forget. So with their experience taking care of someone living with a mental health diagnosis, how can those experiences be amplified? How can these people be provided with proper information, mm -hmm. proper skills, proper resources for them then to be mental health service providers. And the beauty of giving that sort of power to those people is they're able to directly impact the communities they come from. Mm -hmm. So um, you have artists working directly with artists and helping them uh, through the mental health issues that artists go through. You have uh, people who've gone through postpartum depression working directly with those types of uh, communities and directly impacting that. And that's how I came up with the academy, just to be able to provide the skills and the resources and the networks that I've been able to build in the eight years I've been in this space. It's incredible. And you're not just doing this in Kenya, are you? No, no, no. So, so far I've worked with 30 people from eight African countries and mm -hmm. we're looking to expand it and work with even more people across the continent of Africa. Okay. Um, the last question I have for you is this global vision. Mm -hmm. So this is an issue that affects everyone everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, there isn't enough support, whether you're a friend, a family member, the medical, all of it needs a lot more action. Mm -hmm. um, what is it that, what, what do you think needs to happen next? If you look globally, how, what do you think needs to happen? Okay, um, <laughs> just based from the work that I'm already doing, I think I've seen there's a lot happening across, um, across Africa where I'm from and also just speaking with many other people across the globe. There's a lot happening, but then there are sort of 
bits and pieces of things happening all over the place. Even and here in New York City, yeah. all over the world. Yeah, so the bits, so the thing in terms of the vision for mental health will be how can we bring all these people together on the, um, on the same table? Mm -hmm. And if we look at the world, it looks like that's, that will be a really big table to have everybody. So what has been happening is we look at our map like this, where we have the global north mm -hmm. and the global south. And then a lot of the table meetings happen up here mm -hmm. in the global north. And um, we hope that things will trickle down to the global south and we say, oh, we have something that is for everyone. But what if we redefined how we looked at global? And what, what if we stopped looking at our map like this mm -hmm. and looked at our map like this? When then global is all of us, with the things we're doing where we are at, reaching the people who are next to us, and then how do we amplify that? How do we provide more resources, more information, more networks for those people where they are at, so that everyone, regardless of where they are at, they are able to get the information and the support they need for their mental health journey. And just looking at that support, not just from a health angle, but then also looking at the social aspects mm -hmm. of mental health. Uh, when I got sick, I, I, I just joined actuarial school, I had to drop out of school. Um, and there's so many other things that have, I got fired from a job. There's so many things that happened to me based on my diagnosis. So even if I was able to get proper information and support, there are many other aspects of my life. So how can we not just also look at amplifying the health part of it, but then all the social angles that come when we look at mental health and a human being? It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got just a couple of minutes left and wanted to um, say that vision of how do you get those voices together, this is why we're launching United for Global Mental Health this week. Mm -hmm. um, our vision is to, to unite those voices, the, the advocates that are our countries, working in their countries, the high profile voices, the catalysts, those who know how to move financing, mm -hmm. support and, and scale up this kind of support wherever it happens. Mm -hmm. um, so we're really thrilled to be launching that here. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be at the United Nations in, on Wednesday mm -hmm. as a major launch event. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'll look forward to launching there. And we wanted to invite all of you here in the room. If this is something that you care about, um, just want to, I know the first lady asked a question of raise your hand. I wanted to ask you a different question. Can you raise your hand for me if you think there needs to be more action taken on mental health? Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Our message for this week is it's time to act on mental health. Um, we'd love you to join us. Um, we're using a hashtag, I mind. Um, I mind that there's not enough action being taken. Mm -hmm. um, and, and actually over the coming weeks, so if you wanted to get your phone out and <laughs> tweet this, that you care about this issue, you can get this conversation started here. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, if you want to hear about the campaign, we're bringing these voices together to build a campaign that will be kicking off in 2019. Um, if you want to be a part of that, if you want to register to know more about it, if you grab your phones out, United GMH for globalmentalhealth.org. Um, you can register now to find out more information. Um, and as that launches, you'll be able to um, find, you'll be able to um, join us, join Satawa and the voices all around the world. Mm -hmm. um, but I just wanted to say thank you for everything you're doing. Um, I'm just going to do one more shout out for another. There are so many hashtags on so many things these days. Um, <laughs> In October, this we were joking about this earlier, um, quite seriously though, um, there's a, the first World Mental Health Ministerial Summit happening in London mm -hmm. on World Mental Health Day on the 10th of October. And the hashtag that they're asking people to do is to say the world needs, hashtag the world needs what? Um, and on mental health specifically, I think the world needs more Satawas. <laughs> um, so more people advocating, scaling up services um, mm -hmm. and doing more of that, also calling on our governments to do more. Um, I also think we need um, more of these t-shirts. I don't know if you can read it, um, but it says, ask me about making, making mental health sexy. Um, and actually, we, we all need to remember that mental health isn't, men, you know, mental health, we all have physical health, we all have mental health. Mental health isn't a negative thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If, we, if we can have a mental health condition, we need support. But uh, having good, strong mental health and the support we need 
um, wherever we are, that's, that's a pretty sexy thing, I think. Okay. <laughs> so thank you.